Hello and welcome once again to Shepherd of the Valley's weekly video service. I'm Pastor Dave Deckard. It is August 7th and this is the ninth Sunday of Pentecost. The summer is running along and so are Jesus' explanations of God's kingdom and our place in it. We're going to get to that in just a minute, but let's open our service by praying together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God comes to us this day through the Gospel of Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Now in this Gospel from Luke, we get a delightful look at Jesus describing the kingdom of God, what it is, and most especially, how it works among you and me and the communities around us. And I don't think it's an accident that Jesus begins this gospel with four little words that are common throughout the Bible that almost always announce some kind of divine revelation, but also hit us personally right where we live in our very own hearts, in our very own lives. And those words are, do not be afraid. Before Jesus can even begin to talk about God's work among us, Jesus has to reassure us. And Jesus has to move us out of our normal mindset, which is a mindset of fear. Now, we understand this almost instinctively. I think if we're living through this summer of 2022, we have been bombarded with a lot of things that make us afraid from different directions. There are social things going on and social justice inequities and political things and also shootings and mass uh, disasters and all kinds of things that make us look at the world and go, oh no, I don't control this. And that actually is correct. The world is a pretty big and a pretty scary place. But the thing is that most of us, once we get a little bit of power, once we get a little bit of authority in life, go about the business of making it less so. Except we kind of cheat when we do that. Instead of actually going out and changing the world through our action, through communication, through social change, whatever it is that we need to do to actually make the world less scary, we substitute things. We get enough material goods or a house or enough things that we like that give us some internal sense of, well, I'm doing okay, and we make the world work for us, even though it's not really working in the large scale and often not for the people around us. We substitute in this idea of personal security, personal rights, personal safety, whatever it is, for actual action in the world that gives grace and love to the world that changes and transforms the world. 
That's kind of the bargain we make with living among each other in a big, wild world. And this is part of why it is so disturbing to people, despite the obvious tragedy and the loss of life and all the reasons we should be disturbed. One of the reactions we get, for instance, to a mass shooting event is, well, I thought I was safe. I thought I could go. I can't believe this is happening here. And in reality, actually, it's been happening across the world to a lot of people. The number of people whose lives are torn by warfare or political oppression or starvation. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who endure this kind of stress and pressure every day. But what do we do? We separate ourselves away from them. We separate ourselves away from those things. We say, yes, we understand intellectually that this happened somewhere, but not here, not with me, not in my life. And then we build up those walls and we build up our power so that we can make sure it's so. And in doing so, we put a shield or roof over our heads, we put walls around us, we build up protection, and we make sure that our lives are well-defined and also, by our own definitions, full and safe. Now, here's the problem with that from a cosmic perspective. First of all, that world is still out there. We haven't really protected ourselves. All we've done is try to pretend that it's not big and scary and to ignore all the suffering of our neighbors in, in uh, favor of feeling safe ourselves. But the second thing that we have done is we have shut out any possibility of change, either change coming from within us and affecting the world or change coming from outside and penetrating our walls and our shields and our ceilings and getting through to us and really transforming us. We hunker down, we huddle down, we get in the bunker, and that's our way of dealing with stuff. And anything that threatens to either move those walls or bring us out, we're scared of. This is why. Jesus starts this gospel with, do not be afraid. Not because the world isn't scary, it is, but because Jesus says, here comes something from outside of you, from outside of the world even. And in order to experience it, you are going to have to understand a world outside of your bunker, outside of your own self-interest, and you're going to have to experience something that does not center on you and on your power. Do not be afraid. Look up, come out, see what is going on. And what is going on? This is how Jesus describes the kingdom. It is God's great pleasure to give to you. It is God's being. It is God's purpose. It is God's delight to love you, to care for you, to fill you, and not just you, but the millions of people in their own little lives and their own little bunkers around you, the people who are lost or scared or lonely or afraid or hungry. It is God's delight. It is God's passion to have compassion and to give to you, to love you. That is why God is here. Lift up your eyes. Come out. I love you, says God, almost as if to a child hiding in their room. And Jesus goes on to say, look, time out for a second. Do not store up for yourselves things that will fortify or sustain your bunker. It's not going to work. 
do not store up anything that is of this earth and think it substitutes for the love and the joy that is yours, that you are meant to have, that God pours into you and upon you every day. Everything that you can grab, touch, and own will ultimately fall short and fail. Everything you try to do that with becomes a substitute for love and fullness. It does not bring love and fullness. And it's not that you should not handle these things or deal with these things. In fact, they are some of the most important tools we have to negotiate the world, but they are meant to negotiate and share love, not isolation and separation. They are meant to be part of that joy of giving, not something that separates you and lifts you above your neighbor so you can pretend that the world should be scary for them and hard for them, but not for you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. That's just another way to cement and magnify and build up the walls around being afraid. And within those walls, with those possessions, all you will ever know or inherit from them is fear. And that is not what you are meant to do. It is not what you are meant to be. Instead, know that God gives to you always. God has since the moment you were born. God will continue until your last moment on earth and even beyond that. And that is something that no promise or possession of this earth can do. God loves you. God will never stop loving you. Lift your eyes up. Come out and see what goodness is meant for you and what an opportunity you have to share that with the rest of the world who does, no, who does not yet know these things. Jesus finishes this with a very interesting story. He compares God to a thief coming in the night. Now, that's normally an inversion of what we think God would be the, I don't know, God would be the uh, law enforcement officer, or God would be the white knight on the steed coming to rescue. God would certainly not be compared to a criminal. But look at the situation that Jesus is addressing. With everybody huddled up in their own little place, fortifying it against all intruders. Jesus says, guess what? God is one of those. God is one of those things, one of those people who will come from outside you. God is one of those things and people that your walls will not be a protection against because there is nothing to be protected against. And those items that you store up inside as items of fear and protection for yourself, guess what? Yoink! You don't get to rely on them anymore. Instead, God comes and brings something new. And whatever this new thing is, whatever this new kingdom is, cannot be defined in all times and in all places the same way. That would simply make it another possession that you slip in your pocket and own. That would simply make it another item of fear and protection and control. And the kingdom of God is not that. You and I don't know what the kingdom is going to be or call us to on a given day. So Jesus says this, instead of looking down and looking in and trying to own all of this, look up as you come out, be ready. Don't know where you're going, don't know what you're going to see, but be ready. We are going on some kind of journey together, 
For each of us, it may be slightly different, but for all of us, it will be the same in that it is a journey of faith and hope and love that we take in the midst of each other and in the midst of this scary world. And in doing so, we do not avoid the fear, the lack of control. Instead, what we do is celebrate what we are able to be and able to do in the midst of it together. And we say to ourselves, if you took my bunker, if you took my possessions, even if you took my very life, that would not be the end or the sum of the story. For now and tomorrow and every moment of every day, there will be another step forward. And our job is not to cling into place as if the fear of that step overwhelmed the promise. Instead, our journey, our calling, our job is to walk it. And I will take it, and you will take it, and we will take it together. It's a very challenging, but also fascinating look at what God's kingdom does when it hits a world that trades on isolation and fear. I hope that you are able to hear this voice today, that God is speaking to all of us. Do not be afraid. Do not cling on to things that are passing or will pass. Do not separate yourself from the suffering of your neighbor to pretend like you are doing okay. Look up, step out, and let us go together. If not into certainty, then at least into hope and assurance that God loves us every day, that God is blessing us every day, and that God walks with us every step of the way. Those that are clear, those we have no idea about, even those that are too scary for words. You are filled, you are given to, you are a child of God today. May your steps be full of that assurance, but also full enough to overflow and share it with others so that your hands, my hands, God's hands, together might reach out to the world, wrap it in love, and walk forward in peace and hope. Amen.
Having heard God's word, let us now pray together. Heavenly Father, we cling to many things, trying to substitute for you, trying to fill the emptiness inside us that we fear will consume us. Help assure us that you are a giving God, a loving God, a God of infinite abundance. Fill us up with your spirit, with your grace, and with your love, so that we may share these things with others. Help us watch out for, listen to, and tend to those who do not have enough, those who are without food or clean water, those whose physical health is suffering, those who are suffering mental or emotional difficulty or distress, those whose relationships are failing them, also those who can't find jobs or can't afford to put a roof over their heads or food in their children's mouths. We pray for all those across the world who are operating under an assumption of emptiness, and we ask that you use the resources of our hands, our hearts, and our communities to fill them and assure them that you love them as well, and they are part of your family. Amen. We invite you now to gather bread and wine or whatever you have on hand so we can celebrate together the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you now to take the bread and the cup and to share them with the people with you, saying the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are watching this alone, you may partake of the elements as I offer them to you, knowing that God is with you, filling you with love and grace every bit as much as God is with the people of this church. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this week. We hope that whatever is going on in your life, you will know that God walks beside you, giving and filling you just as much as God has always been with his people, with his children, and you are certainly one of them. If you are in the Boise area, make sure to join us. If you want, come in in person 10 o'clock every Sunday morning at Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran on Victory Road and Five Mile. But if we see you only online, we will see you again next week. And we hope that your week is full of blessings and full of love. <laughs>